Hello everyone. I hope every one of you is doing great. I am Deepak Shivastav and welcome to my channel. If you have not yet subscribed, click on the subscribe button and also the bell icon. So in this video, we will learn about the Word Online Connector that is available in Power Automate. This connector provides us two actions. Uh, action number one that allows us to convert a Word document file to the PDF. And the second action allows us to populate a predefined word template we are going to use the second part so we're going to create a word template and automatically populate that template i have created a couple of lists in my sharepoint because we are going to create an invoice solution okay so the solution should be like as a user i can initiate a request that is an invoice request uh, i will submit the request into this list called invoice request in this list, I have created column like invoice number, date, from address to address, generate invoice, yes and no. I'll talk about this column later and the attachment. So I'll provide this information. Then I also have another list that is the line item. And as you know, in the invoice, you have the invoice and then you have multiple line item going under that invoice. So in this list, I have created columns like the title, the invoice number, this is the lookup to our invoice request list. So I've created a lookup column that is looking into that invoice request. Item details, quantity, unit price, line total. Okay, very simple list. So these are the two lists. Okay, then I have created this word template for the invoice. Okay, what this required, it required the date, the invoice date, invoice number, from address to address. And this is the line item. So this is the repeating information. Then you can provide multiple line item into this template. So very simple and straightforward template. So these are the three things that you need to create this end-to-end -end system. Okay, so let's start with the, these two lists. I'm not gonna go into get into two details on how to create these lists. You guys know how to create these SharePoint lists and you can quickly create. It just makes sure that you have all the column and the invoice line item looking up to the invoice request. Okay, let's jump on to the template. So create a template. You have multiple options to create a template. Uh, you can download a template and then work, start working on that. Or you can start from the scratch. I'm opening the Word document here. And if you go to the file, on the top, you can see multiple documents here. Select the template that you want for your invoice processing or for any other purpose that you are going to use this automated process. Okay, you get this automatically created template. Now, in some cases, what will happen, these fields may not be recognized by your flow. So what you need to do, you need to select those fields, maybe remove them, and then insert your, your own fields here and how you can do that. You need to go to the developer tab. Now, if you are not seeing this developer tab, what you need to do, you need to right click, customize the ribbon, okay? and then look for the developer tab here. If it is not selected, select it, click OK, and then you will start seeing this developer icon. This is just to create the template, okay? Now, if you see under this uh, small section here, these are the different field that you can use in the Word template, but not all of these fields are available in Power Automate. So for example, the first field is the rich text control it's not available right now. So if you add this field to this template, and once you start creating a flow, you won't find this field there. So you won't be able to update it. Right now, you can use the text field. You can use the picture control. You can use the checkbox, uh, the combo box, list, and uh, some of these fields are not available. The repeating sections is also available. So in this example, we are going to use the text, picture, and the repeating control because that's what we need for an invoice. So for example, you want to create a text field here. So select this area where you want to insert, right? So I'm gonna click here, click on the text. And what it's gonna do, it's gonna drop the field here, go to the properties, give a name. So this is the date. Now show as, generally I select none. So when someone is seeing this template, they won't see the box around that field, okay? And click okay. 
this is done. Now you can, of course, you can change the font color and all of that pretty easily. So this is going to be the black. Now what's going to happen when I'm going to pick this template in Power Automate, I will see the state field there and I can populate using Power Automate. Similarly, you can just go ahead and update the invoice number, street address. For logo also, what you need to do, go to the developer and insert the picture here. And then, of course, go to property and give the name. Okay, so let me quickly show you the template that I'm using. Okay, so this is the template that I completed. As I said, this is the date. And now if I go to the developer and property, you can see this is the invoice date and invoice number and all those different fields. Okay, and for the table, let me show you how you can create a repeating table that you can easily update via flow. Okay, so I'm gonna delete the existing table from here. Go to the insert table. We need four column, right? We know that. And then I'm gonna pick a format. So this is the format that I want to use. Okay, so give the header name. And then what you need to do, you need to select this row. Okay, go to the developer and then insert a repeating section. Remember, select the row, then insert the repeating section. Do not insert for the entire table. Okay, then for each column, you need to insert a text box, right? And that will be your text box for quantity. Okay, similarly for description, unit price and line total. This is how you can create a repeating table that you can easily populate from the Power Automate. Okay, and then what I did, I uploaded or I created a document library inside my SharePoint and I uploaded this template here. Now, it's not necessary that you have to use SharePoint. Maybe you can keep those templates in somewhere in the OneDrive. So this part is done. Now, let's jump onto the flow. So yes, you are right. Go to flow.microsoft dot com create automated flow because we want this flow to be triggered when the invoice request is ready and when i say it's ready if i show you the column or if you remember the column that we are using i have created one column that is called generate invoice and it has yes no it's like a yes no column we are going to use this flow with the trigger that is SharePoint of course when an item or a file is modified select the site address this is going to be invoice request the next step you got the invoice detail that is this one right but now you need to get all the line item for this particular invoice from the line item list right so what you do you will use another SharePoint action here that is get items site address list name this time list name is invoice line item but here we need to use a filter query because if you don't filter the data what is going to happen it's going to bring everything that you have in your list so filter the data go back to the list and you remember there is a column the lookup column that i have created called invoice number this column is looking up to this list for the invoice number so the filter query should be if the invoice number that is the column name equals to now, because this is a lookup column, we need to compare this with the ID, okay? So this is how you filter the line item list that using a lookup column. So lookup column name equal to ID that is coming from the original list, okay? Pretty much done. So now we have our original invoice request detail and we also have all the items that we need. Now, next step. So if you remember the invoice, there is a logo, right? So we want this logo also be populated or auto-populated coming from the invoice request. So in the invoice request, they can attach the logo with the request. And what we need to do, we need to extract that information and use it when we are generating the template. So I'm going to use another SharePoint action that is get attachments. And again, you need to provide the site name, list name, invoice request and the ID, an ID we know because not the get items, but the ID when item or file is modified. So ID for the request, okay? Another action. So we got the attachment, but we need the content of that attachment as well. So another SharePoint action, get attachment content, provide the site address, ID of the item or the request, 
and the file identifier is the id of the scatter attachment now one more thing we have only one logo if i'm going to select this it's automatically going to add uh, apply to each loop i don't want that because i know there's only going to be one file attached to this request so what i can do i can go to the expression use first and in the dynamic content the get attachment body so i'm just saying give me the first attachment here and then question mark that is just checking if it is null or not so if this is not null id okay so this expression is going to give me the first attachment we're going to create a variable an array variable and that array will store multiple line items in it okay so for that we are going to initiate a variable okay and then the next step we are going to update this array with the information that we are getting from that line item list append to array variable okay this is the array and now the value for now i'm going to keep it empty okay because i need to show you how you can get that information that you need to pass on okay so we have our data already now we just need to start updating the template right so go to the new step search for word word online and now you have two action convert word document to pdf and populate a word template this is what we are going to use click there it's going to ask you location where this word template is stored in onedrive or in sharepoint so we know it's stored in sharepoint in my invoice template document library and this is my template so for now i'm going to select this invoice template and you will notice as soon as i will select it will present all those different uh, property that we have created in the template and here we go right so if you can see here i got all those different property that i have in my template from address invoice state subtotal to address total everything and then this repeating section that is for each line item here in this table one to one mapping is very straightforward so from address you just need to search for that from address invoice state okay a subtotal and the total if you notice here this is just a totaling all of the uh, line item from the repeating table the logo right so you remember we already got the attachment content that's what should be going to your logo so this is the attachment content and that's it invoice number make sure that you are picking the invoice number from the invoice request list and in my case that is the title i just renamed the title to invoice number so i'm gonna just say title okay so we populated this information now look at this information it required this array of quantity description unit price and line total so populate this information what you need to do you need to create an array that have all these different columns in the JSON format and how you can do that. So if I go to my append to array, we'll start with two curly, right? And the only thing that I need to do here, I need to create the schema for my line items that I'm seeing here. I'll start with double quotes, give the column name for the first information that is quantity. As you can see here saying QTY, double quotes, close, colon, double quotes and this is where i'm going to pass the information and what information i need to pass here that i'm getting from my line item list quantity and i have one column there quantity so i'm gonna just select inside these double curly and click on quantity as soon as i do that you see there's already an apply to each because now flow knows that there can be multiple uh, quantity that is coming from that get items perfect after quantity we have description again add comma enter add another column and you know this right so now if you have five columns six column two column three column doesn't matter you just need to make sure that your structure have that information okay so i created this now what gonna happen this array is going to get all the line items that i have for that given request it can be one two or many now the only thing I need to do here, go to your repeating section here, click on the small icon here, select, and then select the variable. 
pretty much it click save now we have our template ready we need to send this to the person who actually initiated this request news tab outlook okay send email who we are sending i'm going i'm going to add dynamic content and then from our when an item is created is created by email now click on the show advanced option and this is where we're going to attach this uh, newly created document attachment name is going to be invoice dot docx the content is very straightforward it's just the output of this previous action of populate microsoft word document select that click save and I think we are ready. Let's save. I'm going into my invoice request, creating a new invoice request here. Okay, so I created this invoice request. And now I'm going to the invoice line item and I'm going to create some line item here. Okay, so I created these four line item and now I'm ready to submit for generation, right? So I'm going to go and edit this item. I'm going to select that yes, save. Okay, so flow is running and uh, it's completed successfully now if I go back to my emails and if I look at the email it's saying one two three four five is ready okay so now you see here the information is populating correctly yeah so that's it the invoice is ready and as I said this can be used for anything other than invoice thank you for watching and thanks for subscribing to my channel keep learning